Welcome to Ear Biscuits, I'm Link. And I'm Rhett. Joining us today at the round table of dim lighting is YouTube's reigning king of music video parodies, Bart Baker. Bart is killing it with his parodies. He's become the guy that everybody looks to to parody the latest popular song and in the process, he's racked up over five million subscribers and over a billion, 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 well just a billion, I said billion three times, but just a, over a billion. That's uh, not a billion when you say it three times in a row. <laughs> a billion's a lot, I mean we don't have to try to. I was trying to do an Bart. echo, but I, you know, a billion, billion, nobody's got that many views, that would be crazy. Now Bart shapeshifts from Robin Thicke and Adam Levine to Katy Perry and Lord with an arsenal of high production values and many times a shot for shot approach to parody. No pop star is safe from his critical, even sometimes controversial roasting lyrics. If you've never heard or seen Bart's videos, here's a clip from his Miley Cyrus Wrecking Ball parody where he, of course, is Miley. Remember when I was a 10 and did not look like a guy. My hair was long, I had clothes on, but now I get nude and cry. Since the VMAs, all the people say I am a total skank. Grinded Robin Thick made the whole crowd sick, especially the Smiths. That one's got over 65 million views. And here's his more recent Blank Space parody with over 25 million views where he plays a demon-possessed Taylor Swift. I am the dark lord of evil. One day soon I will rule the earth. But I got this cute new boyfriend. And I gotta torture his ass first. This is how I always do it. I cast a sweet love spell. And once they're in my whip, I become the girlfriend from hell. In this biscuit, we talked with Bart about what he really thinks about the musicians he parodies and what Pitbull thought of Bart's parody of him. Pitbull. Pitbull. I think you mean Pitbull. No, I, you know, he, to me, because I know him, he's Pitbull. Pitbull. Uh, plus we discuss how he's perceived publicly and his private insecurities. Is there more to Bart Baker than what you think you know about him from his videos? Hmm. You be the judge. But first, we wanna remind you that you can support the show by checking out lynda.com slash Rhett and Link, L-Y-N-D-A dot com, Rhett, A-N-D, Link. Oh, you spelled that out for us. Thank you. Appreciate that. You're welcome. Uh, whether you wanna take better photos or shoot better video with your DSLR, learn the programming skills to develop your own mobile app or edit your own video footage using Final Cut Pro or Premiere, lynda.com offers thousands of video courses to help you get where you want to be. You can learn at your own pace, on your own terms, and you can get a free 10-day trial by going to lynda.com slash Rhett and Link. And I uh, will say that I recently sat down to uh, attempt to edit a holiday video, a little video that we made uh, during our trip over Christmas. You've been putting that off, I've huh? been putting it off. And as I sat down to edit, I realized that Link, I've lost it. Which is why you've been putting it off. Which is a great problem to have. We've got people who do the editing for us now. We don't do, and I and, I, and you did it for a long time, even after I stopped. But it's been so mm -hmm. long that I, it's not like riding a bike. I can't do it anymore. The software has changed too much. So if I'm going to successfully edit my holiday video, I instead of asking you or asking Ben for help, I'm going to go to ask Linda because she's got it figured out. I'm going to go to Linda.com. Can I take advantage of our own of the, of the free trial? Can I do that myself? No, not I if can't you tell my him. Account. I, I can't tell him that I'm that I'm Rhett and Link. I just that I'm Rhett from Rhett and Link. You could, yes, but I feel I mean, weird about that. If you're going to use my account, it's sorry. Well, I'll make a decision for myself. But in the meantime, you guys can go to Linda.com/slash Rhett and Link and try it free for ten days on us. Now here's our Bart Baker biscuit. When I saw you last, you were with your, your dad. Yeah. Your dad was in town from where? From Chicago. Okay, and uh, you met Bart's dad. Yeah, yeah. We I actually locked eyes with him. Yeah, yeah. Did you touch him? I shook his hand. I yeah. touched his hand, and nice. he touched my hand. <laughs> that's, how, that's, that's weird, dude. Why? Why would you? Ask, Never heard of that. <laughs> uh, did you? Did he touch your dad? Is that? Have you had problems? <laughs> no, I mean it's just. I think that's a, that's a good name for a song, honestly. Why did, did you touch my dad? Just, did he touch your dad? <laughs> <laughs> you never know. I mean, yeah. he seemed like a uh, like a straight up dude. He, yeah, he's a YouTube freak. Uh, he knows everyone. Oh, really? Stats like yeah, he follows every. He's on Social Blade twenty four seven, checking numbers on everyone. Is it a really? Yeah. Is it like a? I'm your dad, but I feel like I could be your manager agent. So no, it's, it's more not, of a competition thing, no. or is he a fanboy? He's a fanboy. 
Of who? <sighs> Everyone on on YouTube. Really? Yeah. Yeah. It's so not just was, you. He's not just no, a fan of his son. No, he's just he's super stoked that I'm, you know, doing YouTube, but like he's he's just like a fan of everybody. So. But did you get him into what's his name? Yeah, Buddy. Buddy. Buddy Baker. Buddy Bar Baker. Baker. Buddy Baker and Bart Baker. Buddy Baker is almost maybe better than Bart Baker. That's it those two be, good names. I mean, he could start a channel. Did you? He, <laughs> you know, what did I mean? you get Buddy into YouTube? Or, yes, I or did. did he get you into no, it? <laughs> no, no, I got him into it. Um, you know, he was a little bit. It took him a while to to get into it, but he he really just all of a sudden just like one day. The, the switch flipped, and he knows everyone on YouTube now. I think he did ask something about Link. Really? He asked Maybe. about me? Would, Buddy that, would, would that have made sense? About me? Some, well, ma- ma- I want to think he that probably, Buddy did. I, did. I want to think, uh, to think that Buddy did. <laughs> I, I, I He's don't great, take this the wrong way. Because you weren't there, Link. You know, it's, it's good when you start a sentence with don't take this the wrong way. Yeah. I'm just going to be honest, uh, kind of stream of consciousness here. When oh. I hear the name Buddy, I think about my... Blind Uncle Melvin's dog. Oh, it, and that was his name, huh? Or his, just... he called him Buddy, and he was a beagle. Oh and, God! Those but he wasn't a he dogs. was he wasn't a C and I beagle because uh, Uncle Melvin um, didn't need that. My papa Clyde, um, it was his brother, and he lived across the street. And in his old age, he he lost his eyesight, so we'd go over and visit with him. And this is like I was very young. I'm like talking, yeah, five or six years old because he passed away when I was probably like seven. So I remember um, going over to see Uncle Melvin and then we would, we'd walk him outside to see Buddy in the pen. <laughs> was Buddy in wow. the YouTube videos? Is, this, is, this, is that where this is going? No, his name was Buddy. That's oh, where this that's is where going. That's where it's going. So yeah, well, you know. If it, you tell me more about your dad, trying to tr- it can replace Buddy, he can be my buddy. Yeah. like. Whenever I hear the word buddy, I can think Bart Baker. Well, you should dad. follow him on Instagram. He's trying to blow up. He is. Yeah, I mean, he gets more <laughs> likes than most of my fr- like people I know. What does he Instagram? He's just like takes selfies, like driving in his car, or like when he's on trips, or he'll post like a Throwback Thursday when it's like the family. I, I <laughs> and the funny thing is, I picture him like dressed That's just like you, amazing. like a, a black tank no, top. I wish. No, he's a banker. <laughs> He's a yeah. He's pretty straight laced looking guy. Yeah, totally. We actually a lot of people don't know he's my dad at first. We because he's he's like your lawyer or something. Maybe yeah. I mean, you could I could see him being my lawyer yeah, or uh-huh, accountant. Uh-huh, yeah, but we're totally different career paths. You know what I mean? He was a Yale grad, perfect SAT scores, didn't miss a single question. Like wow. And, and uh, then he went to uh, he went to whatever it's called. What do you do after graduation? Graduate school? Yeah, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> he went to, to Northwestern, so he knew Chicago from there. But he did it. Like he's, uh, it's totally different. So, but he's the ultimate fanboy because it's like he never got to ex- do this stuff, and now he gets to come to L.A. and like experience it through me. How often does he come out? He's probably actually like for business. He's here probably like three times a year, but then he okay. comes with my mom. Maybe another like two. Let's give let's give her my her mom due. Jan Baker. Is also a big fan. She's a she's not like my dad though. Are they still together? Oh yeah, they're cool. together. Um, Where do they live? They live in Chicago, okay. in the suburbs of Chicago. Um, and yeah, I mean, you know, my dad's like n- like a n- nerdy fan girl. I'm yeah. just gonna call him a fan girl because yeah. that's okay. the term, right? Yeah. Um, and then my mom is just more. She doesn't watch other YouTube people. She just watches my stuff when I tell her to. Because she doesn't even really get how to work her computer. So. She's a fan mom. Then she's a fan mom. Yeah, I get it. I and get she it. likes to brag about what I do. Uh, she tries to not bur- like start the conversation like my son dresses as Taylor Swift in Hollywood for a living. But it ends up that way. Is there <laughs> is there an element of oh what are my parents going to think of this one? <clears throat> because I yeah, mean, it- not anymore. Grandparents maybe. Okay. I, I don't know if they watch them or not, but they're very, very religious. You're not like, when, when you visit them, you're not like pulling them up on no, your phone hell and like, no. hey guys, no gramps, way. I don't react want, to this. I don't want them to see it. Um, No. But what do you tell them you're doing? They know what I'm doing and they've seen a couple and I think they don't watch them. They're like, you should do videos that are more catered towards elderly. 
<laughs> I was like, well, that's Start not... a new channel. Yeah. Like, just for their elderly people. So they can, like, do parodies about, like, like nursing homes. I was like, well, I used to use old people in my videos. So... That is a growing demographic, though. Yeah. Oh, I know. I mean, we're going to be in it one day. Right. True. <laughs> so... Yeah, you know, that's the only thing. I And I don't think about it, really, because I can't let that make me hold back. Just being like, oh, I hope my grandparents don't think this is gross. But they're they super, will. you said they're super religious, like super conservative. Yeah. Is that is there like a trickle-down scenario from parents to you? What was, what was your upbringing like, and where was that? Upbringing was in Chicago for most of it. I lived in North Carolina for a year, which was interesting, and then back. What back part of Chicago, North Carolina? Winston-Salem. Okay, we're from North Carolina, so. Oh, really? We know oh, about yeah. the Winston-Salem. You just breathe the air and it's like smoking cigarettes right. around Winston-Salem. Oh, yeah. Depending on the year. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Winston-Salem was interesting. It was all brand new developments and how, you know, all the houses were just like just put up. So we were in the middle of like a farmland, basically. Uh huh. And it was just like a brand new area. So it was totally different than what I was used to. We and then, all, But then you went right back to Chicago. Right back to Chicago. Um, Yeah. So I've been in Chicago most of my growing up. That's where I was really for for all of it. And so, what was the situation at home in terms of you know, were you guys there were certain things you couldn't watch on television? Like how um, strict how strict with your parents? So I was really bad in school. Like not meant not like you know my grades are good, but I was troublemaker. So they were example. Um, example. God, I mean, I. I got uh I I made pancakes once and I put the uh the strain strainer hair in the pancake batter and I mixed it up and I gave the pancakes to my social studies teacher. <laughs> I watched her eat them. Oh, what it my. was your hair? She found out. No, it was hair, hair from, from the other, drain from other people. It was just in the drain. Oh, hair yeah. from the sink drain. Yeah. Yeah. Stuff like that. But then and they found what, out. what did she do when you she ate that? She didn't notice, but we did. She they she got him down. She ate him. She was a bigger woman. We meaning <laughs> all of your classmates knew. You told them, "Hey, I got they you. all knew. They helped. Like they, they, we were all in home ec, and we're like, we're gonna. We were really. Our class was so bad, bro. It was. We had two teachers quit during our eighth grade year. It was crazy. So <laughs> we changed that school for the. Did worse. you get caught for the pancake thing? No, we didn't get caught for that. I did get caught for putting up lesbian porn on the computer and then changing every single volume. When you push the volume on those old Macs, it would make a beep. I figured out how to change it to say schmuck. And all of every <laughs> single computer lab computer would say schmuck. And I got banned from all the computers for like six months. But it was worth it. Stuff like that. I was trying to be creative. Because they couldn't though. switch it back. So for the next six months, you well, couldn't be on the computer. Eventually, they switched but they it back. Said smuck. The guy, schmuck. what's it called? When, what's what's the name of the person who's in charge of computers at schools? The IT guy? Maybe that's it. Siri? He taught us stuff, though. So he was also a teacher. His face looked like hamburger meat, so we called him Hamburger Face. But he got real red when he heard those noises. So it was like he was really like a raw piece of meat. <laughs> <laughs> I think he still works there. <laughs> Did you have any brothers and sisters? I was the only child, um, just dogs. So that you know. But honestly, like, well, Hamburger Face is a is a good example here because what you're telling me is it, you know you've got. Almost a supernatural ability to push the buttons of the artists that you're parodying. Right. Like, and we'll get <laughs> yeah. to this a little later, but I imagine them w watching your work and, you know, there, I just get this sense that there's a, you know, you know where to, you know where to hit them. Yeah. It's and, research. But it sounds like that was, that was just something that came naturally, naturally <laughs> yeah, to you. Like, oh, that guy's face looks like oh, yeah. hamburger. We should call him. Maybe. It's just like a good. I was good with nicknames, sure. Just figuring out things that I could relate. Like, and it'll drive him nuts. It'll make his hamburger raw. Oh, yeah. If I put schmuck on all the yeah, computers. Yeah, it, it worked. Man, he was pissed. And were you a. Did you see early on that, okay, when I do this kind of thing, when I come up with this nickname, when I put the hair in the pancakes, <laughs> um, Everybody reacts in a positive way to it. Well, obviously, all the ki everyone, all the classmates loved it because we were everyone in the class was bad, so everyone kind of fed off of each other, and uh, yeah. So it was directed towards. I mean, were you the bully? Was it directed toward classmates? No, there wasn't. No, it was just teachers. The teachers were mean, though. They were really mean. 
some they, of them, some of them, we, some of them we were cool with, and were the teachers were really cool. But some teachers were just like you know, I, some teachers just don't know how to keep kids under control. They do it by trying to be just like we didn't like it. I guess. What should they have done for Bart Baker? I think it would have uh, stuff just the way that if someone does one thing wrong, don't send them to the principal's office right away. Maybe actually explain to them why that was bad and then try to be a little cool or try to relate to them on a different level so you feel like maybe you're friends with them, you know, instead of just saying, F- you. Mm-hmm. So you're still bitter about it. I'm some of the teachers, <laughs> some of them. I'm trying to think of a teacher I really didn't like. I had some teachers I was like really cool with. And then everything in high school was all just like normal. Yeah. It was just in junior high. Were you the guy making the videos too? Yeah. Yeah. That started early, like fifth grade. So, oh, yeah? Yeah. What's an early one you remember? The first video <clears throat> I remember doing was uh, this video where we took our hands and put shoes on them. So it would look like we're skateboarding and doing these rad tricks. So uh-huh. it would be like this dude skating and it'd be like him about to jump and then it would cut to like the feet going and like grinding and then like <laughs> it looked really fake but it was really funny. <laughs> um, so it was like this skateboard m- movie and it was re- it was funny as hell. That was the first one. Edited, in, edited it in camera. Uh-huh. On the, oh, those are the best. On those little... Uh, what are those crappy old V VH, mini VH, mini TV? It wasn't those. It was open it was VHSC. The, yeah, maybe that was it. it you was had to the, put it in a bigger VHS. Yeah, you had to put the little. Yeah, yeah. that's that's what we got started on. <laughs> right. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. So that was uh, fifth grade, and then and then in in high school, I really started um, pumping out. Like I did my first music video in high school, and we I went around selling DVDs of that thing. I think I sold like 300 copies. And was that a really? a funny a funny video? It was it was actually so it was a music video that we 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 had an assignment that we we could do like uh anything we wanted for this class and we wanted to do a music video and we took a song that was already made. It was Get Your Roll On by the Big Timers. Oh, Super you got did you put this on YouTube? It's on YouTube. Yeah, yeah. yeah, it's your first video. Yeah, so I put that up like but I put it up probably like 4 years after we made it even. Okay. Um, so you made that in high school. That was the first music video I ever did. And you, it was a lip sync video. That was a lip sync video. And, yeah. But you had some nice cars. Oh, yeah. Where that, did you get those from? Most of those cars were parents' cars. We just took them. Okay. <laughs> um, one of them was... Uh, the, the ones that were driving were parents' cars. The other ones we went to the dealerships and we just stole shots of. So it looked <laughs> like we had them. And that was in the, it seems like the angle of that video was just, hey, let's, let's, let's make a rap video for a song yeah. that we like. Yeah, let's just see how, if we can make it look like, how legit we can make it look, you know? Because everyone was, we were like, everyone was super obsessed with Cash Money Records back then. So that you got a like, grade, but then yeah. you also got paid because yeah, that's you true. burned DVDs and sold 300? Yeah, we sold 300, and I got written permission from Cash Money Records to distribute. <laughs> You're kidding me. No. How, okay, how does this that work? This was before they were huge, right? So uh-huh. we found their number, and I called them. I called them, and a secretary answered. I'm like, it's like I, Lil Wayne is yeah. answering the phone or something? It was a secretary, and I was like, can I talk to uh, the guy who owns the company? His name is Slim. Like, I'm like, can I talk to Slim? She's like, oh, the boys are out of town right now. Can I leave a message for him? I'm like, we're trying to distribute this video. And uh, the internet doesn't allow for that yet. So. Right. I mean, it wasn't even, I don't even think YouTube existed then. I think this was 2002. Uh huh. So they were just like, I don't remember why or we got permission or. It sounds like you got permission from the secretary. <laughs> <laughs> the secretary, yeah, but no, but we got a contract. They sent it back. Oh, really? So we had a signature and everything saying we could distribute it. Did they want to cut? No, they didn't care. But the fact that they was... They had cash money. They didn't care. That was back... You know, this was like... Did you bring that into... I mean, when now that it's on your channel, mm, on YouTube, does that yeah. act, is it actually effective for that? Like I don't... It probably can is. You make, you, can, you, can you take the ad sense from that? I, I don't know. I, I don't even know if I'm running ads on that. Honestly, <laughs> I probably am, but... That's hilarious. It's not even, you know... Okay, so, the, so you made that in high school. It was high school, yeah. 16. And, and then... At some point, you're starting to think you want to that you want to be a filmmaker, right? That's what I wanted to do originally. Was 
a filmmaker, director, editor, you know, behind the camera. Mm-hmm. Um, and I went to school for that and all that crap. So, yeah, so you, where do you go to college? You went, went to college to, f- yeah. to major in film. I went to my University of Miami, Florida. So how did, how did you end up at Miami? How did that? Um, so I just, their film school was really good. It was like one of the top five at the time. So it was like USC, Miami, UCLA, and then it was all of it. Mm-hmm. I think uh, it was mostly all California and then Miami. Um, and I actually knew one of my best friend's stepdads was like one of the biggest like alumni there. He's like super into Miami. So uh, he was like, you should just go do like a early interview, show him one of your videos. So I showed him the, the get your roll on video Uh huh. and they're like, okay, you're in. <laughs> really? Yeah. They're like, you're in. They told me that when I was there. They're like, you're in early admission. So that's pretty awesome. Yeah. So I just went there because so, I'm like, I don't want to worry about writing essays. What was <laughs> the uh, Miami film school like uh, experience? Miami's a weird school. It's different than normal, like it's in college Miami. life. It's, <laughs> there's a, there's it's a in co- Miami. There's yeah. a constant tension that you could be underwater at any moment, right? That's yeah. So that, everyone's really anxious. We had hurricanes. No one likes to party. Yeah, we had. No one hurricanes. likes to have fun. No, no, everyone hates having fun. No, but we had like the first week I was there, we had a hurricane hit, and uh, basically when hurricanes hit, the dorms are locked up, and everyone just has sex and drinks. That's all you do because it's a dorm party. You're locked in your dorms. You can't leave. So that was the first week of school. Uh, that was crazy. Then it happened again, and it ripped up the whole campus and like the lake. I remember looking out the window, and the whole lake was in the air because it was like right over. It was crazy. Um, besides that, Miami's uh, it was pretty. It's just different, dude. It was like I was in a fraternity too, which was sucked. The worst experience ever. Why? Also, they didn't have so they didn't have houses. So we had like the Greek life there sucked. Um. Basically, it was like it ended up being like, okay, well, now I'm, I'm paying dues to go to uh, a meeting every week that I sit there listening to this little guy talk about how we're going to like better our minds and bodies and have parties and stuff. Did you give him a nickname? That guy? Oh, God. I um, Did we give him a nickname? <laughs> uh, I feel like we did. <laughs> Let me think. It's going to come back to me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm pretty sure we did. You know, I just saw his brother the other day. They, really? He had an identical twin. I thought it was him. Here so in I'm, LA? Yeah. I think he's like an agent or something. That's weird. Because he was sitting at Starbucks. Like, yeah, 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 yeah. And he's really short, so he's an agent or something. <laughs> <laughs> was the... I mean, the things I hear from YouTube creators uh, who had brushes with film school... Yeah. Is that uh, it didn't do much for me. Yeah, I agree. Oh, it didn't? No, it didn't. Not not for what I did because they taught me old school methods. And I mean, we shot stuff on 16 millimeter and and, and they didn't even, we didn't use digital really. Mm-hmm. Uh, so yeah, we edited on an Avid, like huge, like one of those big ass Avids, you know, like I would never edit in one of those again. Um, but you were there for four years. I mean, you, four years, yeah. you got the degree. I got it, and it's a degree in that, and art, and a minor in psychology. And it looks like a number of uh, videos that you probably made during that time are on your channel too. It probably was like look into my eyes while I masturbate. That was after you graduated. That was right after I got out of college. And that was your that was your first like breakout. That was the first viral video, Mm -hmm. the first one to hit a hundred hundred thousand. which was crazy to me back then. And that's a totally different approach than what you've kind of adopted today. Yeah, so that was original music. How'd you come up with the idea? Of doing the song, of that song? Yeah. Mm-hmm. That song was so uh, Lonely Island inspired. That's like right when Lonely Island blew up. Uh-huh. And I was just like, God, this is so cool that they can make music that's funny and get so many views. Mm-hmm. Um, so and I was what like, was your mind? So you were looking at them, but you had just graduated. Yeah. And what did you know about your strategy? I mean, did you say I'm going to try this YouTube thing, or I'm just going to yeah. I'm going to go to LA and like get on a set? To I work was, my way. I moved up? back to Chicago. Okay, okay. right after college, um, didn't have any desire to go to LA. Um, what was know, your plan? I didn't have a plan. 
I was just like, I'm taking a year off. I'm not going to do anything. And I didn't do anything for a year. Except what? You had to do something. I made that video. <laughs> <laughs> and then I drank a lot and, you know, partied yeah. way too much. L so you uh, lived, at, lived at home? Yeah, I lived at home. I think most of my friends all lived at home right after college. They all came back to Chicago. And were your, did Buddy and Jan say, uh, Buddy and Jan what, were, what are you, you going to do, Bart? They're like, you should need to get internships and stuff. I, got, I did some internships. Um, so I think I might have had an internship during this. Maybe it was right after. I don't even remember. I interned at, uh, I was doing editing for Jerry Springer. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Yeah. Really? Well, that's. So it was really random. I found this internship, and it's a post house in Chicago. That's where they filmed Jerry Springer and Steve Wilco's show. Yeah. Um, then, not anymore. Now they film it somewhere weird. It's cheaper. So you, you get to see uncut. I would see the uncut, dude. And Jerry I was Springer. I was supposed to be like a little like bitch intern who worked the front desk. Mm -hmm. But I was like, I can edit. And they're like, yeah, whatever. So and they're I, all actors, right? <laughs> yeah. No, they're not. <laughs> they're not. That's the crazy part. They're all freaking weird, real people. But I thought that they brought people on Jerry Springer who kind of wanted their 15 seconds of fame, so to speak. That's probably true. Not even minutes. And then they play it seconds. up. Yeah, they and then definitely they play would, it up. And they would probably give them assignments in the way that you would give someone on a reality, if you were producing a reality oh, show. Oh, totally. Like you're, listen, you're playing yourself, but yeah. uh, you don't know who the real father is. Right. And when you find out, you probably want to get really upset. Yeah. Matter of fact, you probably want to sh throw a chair, huh? Don't you think, maybe? Yeah. Okay, action. Yeah. That didn't happen? Well, I couldn't see what was happening behind the scenes because we just got the footage. But it wasn't like they didn't, there was no raw footage of like mm. a, a director coming out and- No, not really. Really? It was pretty live. Like they don't even stop. It's really like- Well, they, that restores my faith in yeah. humanity and they Jerry Springer. They actually film it all almost and they don't like be like, they don't, they're not like cut. We need to do that again. They There's actually, no stopping down. No, they just do it. <laughs> so, and so, I ended up- sh So you, you left it not feeling what I thought and what I just told you. It's like, you're yeah. actually like, no, this is for real. These people are yeah, for real. it was for real. I mean, it seemed for real. And it was sad. just people are this, there's that many people that are that messed up. They're all like not there, you know? Yeah, they don't yeah, really yeah. get what's even happening. <laughs> They're in a whole nother world, but- Did you I, enjoy editing it? I ended up editing the intros. Remember like those, you know, those like, those like- Before yeah. the people would yeah, come out. And they're backstage, yeah. Yeah, so it's like the intro of the actual show where it's like this episode on Jerry Springer. And it's like all these stupid cheesy effects of like, you know, like a, like a vignette on like a woman crying and like, <laughs> and then like crappy transitions to like a guy like in black and white, like he raped her and stuff like that. But it is an art form. I mean, <laughs> it, 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 it defined a genre of art, if yeah. you ask me. No, totally. And you know, I got a, I, I got a knack for that somehow. And they let me start doing those. They had editors that were working there for like six years who would do it, but then they let me do it. Uh -huh. Then they asked me to move to freaking uh, New York, and they're like, "We want you to be a full time editor. We're going to give you like eighty grand a year." And I was like, "No, I want to do YouTube." Because so. by that point, look that into point, my eyes. That's that that video did well, and then I put out my first parody while I was there too, which did well. Like, and what which what was the first one? Boom Boom Pow, a parody of Boom Boom Pow. Okay. Called Big Old Pubes. And that, the, <laughs> which is as Black Eyed Peas. Song, black Eyed right? Peas, yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, and 2.68 uh, million views five years ago. Wow. And so it's probably gotten residual views over the years. Oh, I, yeah. You know, but it, I, it probably went pretty big at the time, I it guess. It did okay, I think. It was the same type of thing. Like it did like 100,000 in like a week or two. Um, and who was helping you at the time? Like, who who was the guy in the "Look into My Eyes" video? That's just my. That was my friend Rob, who still lives in his parents' basement. Actually, <laughs> really well, you know, there's a lot of room in there. Uh, it's a nice basement. Yeah, it's like the the whole. <laughs> but yeah, footprint he, of the house is yours. That's true. Uh, that was just you know, my friend. I'm like, dude, you got to put on the space suit, bro, and lip sync and talk about masturbating. Yeah, yeah and he was like, I'm down. Okay. And then you did the Kesha TikTok parody. Yeah, and then. You did the California Girls Katy Perry parody mm -hmm. with like this, these two elderly dudes. That one was the first old person parody we did. I also should note that by this time I'd been hired by a porn company. All right, let's talk about that. You should, we should note that. Yeah. So you moved from Springer. It's like, where can I go from here? So I was at Springer. I got contacted by the owners of Reality Kings. 
the biggest porn company in the world. The owners, you know, they're like 32. They contacted you because of your YouTube video? Yeah. They found it had those, the word masturbate in it. They found the boom boom pow one. Okay. And they're like, this is really funny. And I was like, thanks. And they're like, would you consider making like some parodies uh, for us and put like the, the watermark in the corner with a link? And I was like, yeah, sure. And then somehow I convinced them to hire me full time and move me to Miami. And because you wanted to go back to Miami, I didn't, but they were located on South Beach. It was just like kind of convenient because I already knew the area. So they actually, that's why that's I the, was wondering the watermark why that watermark in the video. Yeah, those so, are RK watermarks. So if I go to RK.com or whatever that is, that's a porn site. That's porn. <laughs> so <laughs> hardcore porn. The first thing you'll probably see is a huge <laughs> chick's mouth right when you get there. Okay. And but, but in, in, so how do you come up with the idea of. Okay, the strategy for this is going to be, I'm going to do uh, a Katy Perry parody, right? but it's going to be two old dudes. That was, I just got this idea originally, like, um, why don't we do old people, like, sing the hits? Like, it would be funny because they don't know the music or the tempo or anything. And then I was just like, well, why don't we just put the damn people in the parody and have them play the characters? And so we tried it. And it turned out people thought it was hilarious, and it got picked up by like every news outlet. And they didn't. The guys at Reality Kings didn't care that it had nothing to do with their product. It was <laughs> no, just they just wanted the watermark. Yeah. Really. Yeah. And they paid well for that. Yeah, they paid well, man. Out of college, I mean, it's a really. It was a real. It's more than most of the people I know are making now. Where did you get these two old guys for the Katy Perry, California Girls? Ah, uh, Craigslist. Of course. So, what is hmm. that? How do you com- how do you compose said Craigslist ad? I think it was just. I think I, I probably still have it actually saved somewhere. Um, <laughs> We've posted some weird Craigslist ads ourselves. Yeah. Don't yeah. get me wrong, but so it was, it was like, like, like hey, I need for a really senior, old dude. senior citizen to star in music video parody, and it was just like for needs the to basically be nude and well, dressed like tell Katy Perry. That. Wh- like, when did you tell him that? When we came that. to the audition, we're like, "This is like, I'm like, we're like, are you comfortable wearing a bikini?" And, and this one guy was like, "Oh, oh. Alan is his name, the guy who we ended up using in a lot of videos." Alan, he was just like, "Oh, yeah, I'll wear whatever. I don't care. You know, fine. Like, it sounds like fun to me." They all just wanted to like, they were just bored and they wanted to do something fun. Yeah, he played Justin Bieber right after. He that. was good as Bieber in the diaper. <laughs> That was one of my favorites, honestly, the Bieber one. God, that one gets me going. Some of the, my old videos make me laugh harder than my new ones. So what, well, you know, the interesting thing is, is, is I, can, I can relate to that. I think that, uh, and we'll get into this, of what you're doing now, which is a fine-tuned thing that is really, it, it's working, and you can kind of, yeah. we, I think we know why it works, you know why it works, and why you're continuing to do it. But when you see something like those two dudes doing the Katy Perry song, you see the there's a an extra amount of hate on that video and just dislikes because because it's just a weird sense of humor right <laughs> yeah. it, it, but it's just it's so weird it's funny right right but it's so, not the kind of thing that has this it's not going to have the mass it's appeal it's not mass appeal it's Tim and Eric yeah, style right. and that's honestly where i got my inspiration for that video like my old videos were all green screen tacky backgrounds wanted to make it look cartoony and at the time I was also thinking, though, like, how do I do something that'll make me different than, you know, every other kid trying to put up a, a music video or something like yeah. that? Because there's so many. And and I was like, well, let's just do something totally weird that'll get picked up by news outlets. Mm-hmm. Because that was the only way to get views at first. When you don't have subscribers, you got to rely on websites and bloggers to pick you up. So how many of these uh, of these watermarked videos did you do ah uh, good question and how long did you stay in miami i think there's like is there maybe six of them or something um did it's you started and, with tiktok and it ended with only girl in the world so did you end up also editing porn for them not no you know what we did do though we made some theme songs for them which is really cool like i made the milf hunter theme song um what, that was a what? good song the Milf Hunter. Milf Hunter. Was that a movie websites. or just a video? That's one of their websites. Milf okay. Hunter. It's okay. a drunk guy who has sex with mothers. 
And and, and, he, <laughs> and you wrote his theme song. They wrote it because they just they just had signed a deal with a uh, Direct TV to have their channel on Direct TV, so they needed all these theme songs for their mute for their shows. Can you hum a little bit of it? I mean, it was like uh, it was really eighties. I think it was like you can find him on the hunt, no 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 no, looking for a mom to. F- no, 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 no. That's all. I don't remember the rest. <laughs> but it was your vocal, too. Yeah, my vocals. Did you also play, was there like the MILF part and you like, brought your voice up? No, I do that. No, it was just straight up, just like a hit theme song. <laughs> <laughs> just, just, yeah. A hit so we, right we had some interesting roles we played. It was me. I, I, I did oh, this you with were my in buddy. Them. No, we weren't in them. We just did the music. Me and my friend moved there together. Okay. Um, because we were both in the Boom Boom Pow parody, and I was like, oh, I work with my friend, so can we both come? And they're like, sure. So we both moved to Miami together, which was sweet, because I had someone, to, it was kind of like uh, the dynamic you guys have. We work together on every video. And then you're, you you know, do you tell your parents, oh, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm working for... Uh, they I'm, knew what was up. They knew exactly what was happening. The, but grandma and grandpa didn't. I don't think they did. <laughs> I told them, their, their, their secret name is WorldNet Media. So that's kind of like the okay. you, the actual company. If you go and interview for it or look it up, it's WorldNet Media. Uh, they had a lot of other websites, like and, dating and stuff like that. And, and what, I mean, so they your parents knew about it, but what did they say? They, I mean, they were, they were kind of freaked out. <laughs> it's like their son straight out of college is working for this company. They didn't know what, exactly what I was doing day to day. And neither did the company really, because a lot of the times we wouldn't show up. Like we would, sh- we'd go to work at like two, and nobody would. There, we didn't really have a boss. It was weird. They kind of hired us as this new. Tr- they were trying to out this new like, like branch. The watermark it, wing. Yeah. It's like let's they, try. They yeah. gave you a watermark, Dude. and then you just yeah. did whatever you wanted. And to it do. was originally supposed to be the YouTube channel was supposed to be like Reality Kings slash Reality Kings. Um, but they let you do it all on your own channel. Yeah, fine. They did. It was just lucky that that happened because so what happened was we put up a video and it got it got 18 plus, I think. Uh-huh. And I said, well, the reason that's happening is because I'm you're not partners. I'm a partner. So I get preferential treatment. We'll also get better listings in the searches and we'll get, you know, whatever the hell it's called featured. Back so then. you had already gotten partnered based on the other stuff. Some of those early periods. Yeah, yeah. Which raises another question, because I've heard multiple things from multiple people. You know, sometimes you hear people say, "Well, if you if you get into this parody thing, you're going to have to uh, change the tune of the song oh, okay. just enough right. in order for you to be able to not have it pulled." And I mean, so what's the actual deal on that? I didn't monetize any of my videos until I started making them actual parodies because my original videos were satires. If you think about it, a satire makes fun of a different topic, but takes the original instrumental and like that's weird what, Al. That's what mo- exactly. That's why weird Al has to get permission. Um, legally a parody has to comment on or criticize the original in an ironic or humorous way. So we do all those things by making fun of the artist, making fun of the video, recreating the video shot for shot, making fun of the song. So we cover all those bases. If you do that mm. legally, um, you know, it's fair use. Right. But you have to you have to do it that way. <laughs> and we've never had any legal issues uh, really to this day. A lot of people have legal issues. Shane what? has been having legal issues. Like, right. Mm-hmm. It's crazy. Well, the Lord video. What happened with that? What was the what was the scenario with that one being taken down? Yeah, so that one was taken down, and uh, you know it was a it was a full on takedown. I had to I had to do copyright school. I don't know if you guys have ever had to do that. It's like a stu- no, but you you like certainly traffic ju- traffic you school certainly just you- proved yeah. that you went through it. I mean, yeah. you, you gave us a good synopsis of fair use right then. Oh yeah, parody versus. Satire. I'm, I know. I know it like the back of my hand. I so mean, what? What was the original video? Why was it taken down? And the, then the tell original, us about the school, the Lord one. Yeah, it was. Uh, they they took it down for. Uh, they said you know it was the musical composition that was what it was filed under. Okay. And then the next day, well, I made a video when I found out right away, and I put it up, and I'm like, you know, this is. If you guys agree, tweet at the publisher. Um. 
And I guess they did. Obviously, they did. I saw they did. It was crazy. They got it was like every five seconds, like the publisher was probably like freaking out. Um, and then it was back the next day. And the publisher apologized on Twitter. And they're like, that was not us. That was our that was an automatic machine. Uh-huh. Like, but that's not true because you can't in order to file a takedown, you have to do it by hand manually. Right. So they basically just kind of realized that I have a feeling they were going through all the parodies, which probably most of them weren't legal and done correctly and just taking them down or trying to claim them. Mm-hmm. Um, and then when they took this one down, I'm sure their lawyers looked at it and they're like, you f-ed up. You better put it back right. up. You better put it back up right now. So, but you still, because of the process, you had to do the copyright school thing. Oh yeah, I had to do the copyright school. You can't even access your channel again until you do it. And, and so, is that like an online? It's thing just to right go there through? online. Yeah, I got every answer right. I didn't even watch the video. So they make you watch like an hour long video. I'm like F- that. I knew all the answers. Is that for one strike? Once, yeah, one strike. So you got to keep taking it if you get another one, and it's kind of ridiculous. But hmm. But yeah. you you are already employing the the strategy uh, of creating things as a technical parody, not yeah. as yeah, not as a uh, what's the other word satire. satire. Yeah, I was. Yeah, so but um, there's, there's my dad trying to FaceTime me. <laughs> just uh, just uh, put it on speaker. We can talk to him. Do you want? Should we talk to him? Yeah, just tell him it's he's on our podcast, and we're just tell him we're basically live. Let me try to get him. Let me try to connect with him. He's trying to do FaceTime audio. <laughs> Dad? Hello? Buddy? Hey, Dad, I'm on a... I'm, I'm, do, I'm doing a podcast right now with Rhett and Link, so you're on with him. Oh, hey, cool. Hey, guys. <laughs> we were just talking about how you're such a big fan of all the YouTubers. Mr. Baker, can we call yeah, you, buddy? Well, yeah, you call me buddy, right. Okay. <laughs> He's like, yeah, you but, call me, buddy. <laughs> okay. Um, uh, it's kind of hard to explain, but up until this moment, when I thought about Buddy, I thought about a blind man's dog, <laughs> my blind uncle. But n- <laughs> but now I'm gonna think about you from now on. Okay. Well, I appreciate that. It seems like a lot of people think about dogs. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, yeah, I have. That's not the first time you've heard that. I'm sure. No. No, I'm not, I don't know about blind dogs. I think it's the first time I've heard it's a blind dog. <laughs> no, no, my my uncle Melvin was blind, but his dog Buddy could see really well and smell really well. He's a beagle. Ugh, the worst. <laughs> um, so what, I'm calling you from Puerto Rico. I just thought I'd uh, give you a shot while I was here. Oh yeah, how's well, that? Hey, are you fangirling it's, right uh, now? It's hot. Yeah. I mean, uh, yeah, I'm in. Uh, north of the uh, El Yunque National Forest <laughs> in uh, Puerto Rico. Do you get you get internet there, obviously. Well, I'm actually back in my hotel room right now. Well, you thank God, right? Not, not over in the National Forest right now. I was over there <laughs> hiking around. Mom told me not to, but I was hiking around in the National Forest. By yourself. Yeah, that's dangerous. And you don't even you can't even watch YouTube there, can you? Well, but, it's hard. It's actually hard to hike around by yourself because it's so crowded. Ah, wow. Well, you know what, buddy? We uh, why don't you uh. Give a plug to your uh, Instagram. So oh, yeah. <laughs> we, we know every, everyone uh, wants to follow you on that. What's, What's your, your Instagram? Instagram handle? W Baker I I I, right? Right. W Baker I I I. He's the third. We're all actually named Walter. <laughs> yeah, Walter's the fourth. <laughs> yeah, I'm the fourth. He's really? The fourth. Link's a third. Yeah. Really? Yeah. My, my son and his is son fourth. is a fourth. Oh, oh, there you go. Well, I'm a fourth. Wow. And everybody asks, What's your middle name? And we say, we don't have any middle names. They say that's so strange. But but Bart says, well, but I'm the fourth one with no middle name. It's not that strange. Yeah, it's not that strange. Really, it's not. <laughs> <laughs> well, why don't I call you back after I finish up? Uh, well, I'm going to sleep. I just thought I'd give you a call. All right. All right. All right Lo- talk to you later. Love All right. you, Bart's dad. All right. <laughs> Bye, Dad. Love Good you. Good talking to you guys. You too, man. Bye. Oh, there he is, buddy. Man, You're going to see those pictures from Puerto is. Rico. Yeah, he's definitely going to take a bunch of selfies there. I wish he would have called earlier. This would have been a good podcast. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, sorry, guys. Just kidding. So um, uh, we're doing we're doing a potential reality TV show based on these parodies. So it's like the making. It's like mm-hmm. making them video, right? But it's like with the parodies. And then half of it will be like all the that goes on when we're producing it and coming up with the ideas and the other half will just be whatever personal. 
uh, life, which is probably going to be all set up, right? For reality TV. Yeah, of course. Um, so and, and how how far along is that? Is it just a concept? No, or? that's far enough along where they've already. It's we're doing it right now with Banaje, who is Boonham and Murray, like uh, you know, real world the Kardashians all that. Crap. Okay, they contacted me like um maybe a month. I go to three weeks ago. But they moved so quickly. They already interviewed all my staff. They've been to shoots. They've cut a sizzler and really, they've presented it to their CEO and COO who said do it. And they're trying to sell it to E, which would be dope. Right. E's and cool. then what? What? What's the working title? We don't know yet. We don't know yet. It's called the Bart Baker Project right now. Okay. Yeah. yeah that you might get, be that. Might be the name. It might be, be better but than that. Who knows? It's not a bad name, really. Um, but they, you know, where does the drama come from that actually exists? Um, besides in the comments, like, what's the real oh, life drama? It's it's a lot of uh, just well, the shoot days hell always uh-huh. We're cramming everything in like twelve hours. I mean, my producers are having heart attacks. Because and- isn't there? There's like a kind of a race you don't you want to the timing is means so much for well, these that's things. another thing right so what what's the so walk me through from okay taylor swift reliefs releases blank space you're watching the video you're reading the com the hater comments on her video yeah. you're being inspired i mean how quickly do you want to turn around a parody and you know, you, you're writing the lyrics you got people who also write yeah. and kind of pitch things at this point yeah but how quickly do you need to get yours up? Um, is it kind of loose or? It's kind of loose. So sometimes it's good to get it up quick. Sometimes it's good to wait so it has more exposure in the long run. Like we just did Uptown Funk, but it's been out for three months, something like that. Okay, so that's a, that's a long. It's like it starts a... slow. Some of them blow up right away. That one blew up gradually. So we put it on the back burner. Um, Taylor Swift, we knew right away we had to do it as sure. soon as possible. It still took three weeks because getting a house like that's hell. Um, but you've got someone who's creating like a sound alike track. Yeah. You're not just ripping the karaoke track. No, we got someone recreating everything from scratch. And they have to change a little bit, right? It's not changed tune wise, no. Right. So it's basically you don't have to change. We anything. don't have to change anything because, because of the parody. Use. Because, because of, parody. of the fair use. So it's like you can take a certain amount of something and 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 use it. And and, and then when you're writing the song, kind of stepping through the process, you kind of talked about this line of, you know, the more harsh you are, the the more response you're going to get, positive and negative. Any yeah. press is good press. Sure. But you you seem to say that there is a there is a line that you don't want to cross. And yeah. So you have to pull back. It's um, a, yeah, w- w- what it kind of help to clarify what that line is for you. I th- it's whatever I would personally feel uncomfortable, s- like conveying to everybody. I like to everybody or to the artist's face. Like, do no, you picture to artist... singing to Katy Perry <laughs> or Nicki Minaj saying, "I can"? Yeah, I'm comfortable saying to Nicki, "I don't." You're picture... a wa- you're wasting your talent because yeah. that's literally a lyric, right? Yeah. Or, or is your evaluation, I'm comfortable saying that to the audience. I don't think I would, no. It's, if I'm comfortable, I'd never think about saying it to the artist because then it, I would never say something directly to an artist like that because I don't actually, a lot of the stuff I don't actually mean. It's just stuff that it's, I know people will, will, will agree with and I know we'll get views hmm. and I know it'll be funny. But like a lot of, the, like I always say, most of the artists that I, Make fun of and and roast. It's a roast, basically, right? But it's not a so it's not an editorial piece. This is not Bart Baker's feelings about this artist. No, this is you're playing. You're playing a character almost. You're embodying the 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 hater. Yeah, almost. Uh, that, that already exists online. Right. So it's almost like that, and it's also just picking apart the video and everything like that, and um. But a lot of the times, I like the videos. I like the song. I mean, I bump it, I'm bumping. I'm I'm bumping Bieber in my car. You know, I don't. I don't have anything against these people. I'd love to meet all these people and work with these people. Uh, and I hope most people can understand that it's just a comedy. And it's like, it's like, well, you know, it's just, it's the. I always say it's like when you roast someone, you say the meanest, shit, but yet, but you kind of do it in a way that's paying homage to them, right? So it's like, oh. I'm saying all this mean shit. It's not supposed to be taken seriously. It's supposed to make people laugh. Um, so that's honestly, that's 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 how I feel. Do you I, think that's how 
the artist takes it and what have you, who has responded? Pitbull saw the Pip wanted it about him, which was pretty harsh. What was uh, the harshest line in that one? Um, God, what was it? Um, I mean, the whole the whole concept was that he's a, that he's a sellout for all those sponsors. Um, the harshest line itself was well, at the very end, their heads explode, and it's like this guy is like, "Oh, thank God, those douchebags are dead," and then all the World Cup sales go through the roof because that was their song as a World Cup song. Uh-huh, yeah. Um, it was just really stuff that people always so say. So it's about embodying him. people. I hate you so much. I wish you were dead. That's that, yeah. That's that's pretty far, right? That's pretty bad. So then he turns around, and what does Pitbull say? He loved it. He thought it was funny, and he he was like respected. Was this the, on Twitter or a phone call? This or, was or a, did he call you through your dad? This, yeah, <laughs> tell buddy. This was in. Uh, this was on Twitter. He tweeted the video, and he said, "Thanks for the love." He said, thanks for the love. <laughs> thanks for the love. Yeah. Um, I, I haven't watched this yet. <laughs> yeah. I'm too busy to watch this. And then he invited me to be in his music video. So. Did you do that? Yeah, I was in it, and I met him. And Which one? Fireball? Yeah, Fireball. Yeah. Uh, one of the lines in the video was, I pull my pants up to the sky way too high because he's always got like a pit bulge going on. You know what I mean? Uh-huh. Um, and he's like, he's like, hey, pop boy, I don't pull my pants up that high now, do I? That's the first thing he said to me. <laughs> <laughs> and then we took pictures but he was and then he was so he's so he's super cool and he's after we shot with he was like he was like we need to do stuff together i'll help you write stuff and come up with concepts for if you're doing a parody just let me know and i'll i want to be involved he's just like i understand he didn't really mean that though did he i, I he seemed like he did he had some vodka though so he <laughs> did he pick up on the miami-ness of you I don't know if he knows that I went to Miami. I don't know if I told him that. But it like when I look at the end of your videos, it's like when you're doing your vlog, like the way you know your tank top and the way you wear your hat. I think <laughs> that he, he's Bart is Miami. Yeah. Yeah. I mean. Yeah. I mean. I don't I, know. Maybe something about the hat in that way. Yeah. Like your hat's got a lot of sequins on it. Oh, that. I. I that's what I think of Miami. Miami is very sequiny. Yeah. <laughs> It was like Ed Hardy and <laughs> <laughs> everyone had that there. But you don't, so do you don't consider yourself like repping Miami? I don't think so. From an apparel standpoint. No, I feel like it's more LA at this point. Yeah. Definitely now, not Chicago though. Yeah. Now a guy like Pitbull, uh, to me, I, 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 my speculation is he's just a smart guy that yeah. knows that the best way to handle what you have done is to embrace it. Yeah. Uh, but you know as well as, as anybody who does stuff that people can criticize. Sure. That when people say things that could be true and the, the, the things, the doubts that you might have about yourself, it, it hurts. People, it, it, you know, it, Taylor Swift watches this and, and I think of somebody like Taylor Swift watching this thing and just getting mad. <laughs> yeah. You, well. you, you know, I can, I can see that and that's almost kind of what you're, pointing out in the way that you portray her. I mean, I can't yeah. imagine her laughing it off. Pitbull, yeah. yeah. Pitbull's like, bring this guy over. Certain people, you, know? you can t- kind of tell or feel like you would have a, uh, an idea of how they would react to it. Uh, Pitbull, so when you think about that, when you when you have this mental picture of Taylor Swift sitting there just getting pissed yeah. at you. Or I, hurt. I picture her or, crying, yeah. or crying Or getting crying hurt. How, 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 what, how does it make you feel? <laughs> I just... Uh, it's so it's so hard. I mean, I can understand them maybe her feeling like like kind of hurt by it, but at the same time, it's like I'm not targeting her directly and and we do every artist. So it's like just if they can just see you I you feel well, like you you are targeting her directly, we're but targeting you're not her, targeting, we're not targeting her, targeting exclusively. her solely. Yeah, right. Yeah. Exactly. Right. It's like every artist is is in we're just hitting everyone and it's not like we I think people would should know by now that we don't have anything against them as an artist because we do every single artist. Uh it's just that's what that's what we do. That's but, what do. and you have to find an angle. Yeah, you have to find an angle. That angle is, you know, she's the devil. <laughs> people like it. But now, there are but there are other choices that are risky for different reasons. And the risk isn't um, that you might hurt their feelings, mm. but- um, Get it taken you know, down. Or, you know, if somebody like Kanye is so volatile, yeah. well, are you, are you sure that you want to don 
blackface oh god and play him with your cheeks cheeks puffed out <laughs> yeah that's like, bad i mean what was behind you know what was what was behind that that led to that decision i mean was there a risk calculation in there i'm going to let you finish but first yeah. i'm going to send someone after you yeah uh no i didn't even think about it because well, he's nev- not Suge Knight. No. I don't think you should do that with Suge Knight. No. Um, and then walk around in a parking lot in front of his truck or anything. Yeah. That was just like a, it was just, it all came down to the fact that I just didn't want anyone else playing the character at that point. And now I just wanted to play the character. It, I never thought about it as blackface. I just was like, put me in makeup. Make me look as much like him as you can. And no one in your squad said, you know what, this is blackface. You do know that this is, like, people are going to re- They said, react. like, it was bad. They said, like, it could be bad, but nobody said don't do it. I mean, um, first of all, I'll be honest with you. I was surprised that there were only, you know, there's only, like, 5,000 dislikes on that video. Yeah. And and I and so I was expecting it to be, you know, just, like, you know, tens of thousands of dislikes. and people, Yeah. And there's lots of comments uh, that, hey, this is racist, and there's lots of people who are like, well, He's playing a character. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, would you do it again? I guess is the question, though. I don't, I, the, there, I think that I need, that there's a, I, I don't want to play Kanye again. And I don't think I need to. I feel like at this point, I'll get someone else to play those characters. Like, there's certain characters Why? I will play. And it's like Drake or, because Drake is, people, he's lighter skinned. People just get, have this thing in their mind that it's racist to, to do any, like, coloration of your skin. Like, that's just something that's always going to be there. And blackface itself is so different. The whole thing was just, like, blatantly being, you paint your face black, and then you're just being racist, making fun right. of every single characteristic. Um, and when we when I did that, I was like, well, we're not going to mention anything about the fact that he's black. Everyone knows that. It's just like, if I'm going to play him, I can't have l- white skin. Darken me up. Put on a ball cap, but mm-hmm. then you get your, your parody of Lord. You know you write th- and sing that she her lyrics are racist. So <laughs> yeah. that's kind of is, is that kind of hypocritical there that you're making fun of her for saying now I'm going to list out everything that I think black people like Chris Style or however you say it right Chris Stahl. Chris that was Chris like the, <laughs> I was like. <laughs> Yeah, well, those that was were almost a joke what I did there, but it was yeah. not intentional. People can interpret being. I mean, I was saying that because it was an, a news article I found, like on like a website, like oh Lord wrote this song about hip hop culture. Mm-hmm. Um, so and, yeah, again, so you were embodying someone else's criticism. Uh, you ch- kind of channeled that in the parody. I, I think that's interesting. I think yeah. it's it's certainly not a way that. Uh, it's not a first way that you view your videos. I think that um, it's an interesting. I don't. I don't know if I'd call it a defense. May, I, just an explanation. I yeah. certainly think you're just being honest. I, I find it. You know. I wonder if people are thinking right now. Well, that's a rationalization. I mean, it. Be, whenever you say it, whenever you sing it, it becomes. It becomes your point of view, mm-hmm. or doesn't it have to? I mean, you're saying no. Yeah, I mean, it's my. It's my point of view during that video i guess some i don't agree with a lot of the stuff that uh that it, we're just blowing it out of proportion purposely have you ever felt the need to somehow offer that explanation like you know okay well everyone do your fans know that that's what you're doing that you're kind of embodying my the hater my fans know my hardcore fans know all the comments where people are really angry are people who stumble upon the video and don't have a clue that there's a whole slew of these for every single person out there who's, you know, but they just find this one and they're like, wow, this person must really hate whatever Lord to make this right. video. It's like they did this video just like about Lord saying all this mean stuff. Like they must. must and does that mean you get tired of that? Yeah. The comments? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But you've never said that I'm not, I don't believe all these things I'm just embodying the haters so I've it's never like a, said it's like a double level parody I, ha- I said that on uh 
my last video, I left a comment on it saying that um, because that was all the original video was all about how the, all the controversy was because she was 12 and he was 28 dancing together. Right. So I said and I blew that out of proportion. They get arrested at the end because, you know, um, anyway. And then I left a comment on that. I'm like, I don't actually think that that was what all the comments were on the original video. So we took that, and of course we're going to make fun of that because that's what the news is. Right, that's people's, yeah. that's the perception. That's the perception. That's what people are getting all up in arms about on the original. That's what we're going to make fun of. Now, and it's, it's an interesting thing because it works so well and it's kind of the key to your success right now. You know, not that you not, aren't capable of other things, but you had this this angle that is really working. Yeah. So does that create a do you ever think okay well now my job is i see the latest music video that comes out and now i've got to figure out how to embody embody the negative perspective on this video to make my video kind of yeah you have to put a spin on it like uptown funk was really hard that song and video are awesome like uh-huh. you, you, you see it and you're like, okay, here it is. Yeah. Everybody likes this. I love I've it. got to hate this for it's everybody. Like, yeah. And that, yeah, I think it's also like. And then, so tell us what, what, where you landed and how you got there. With Uptown Funk? Yeah. So Uptown Funk was like, it's very hard to find something. Sometimes it's like, we, we let's do it in a way that's poking fun of what's happening in the video as opposed to totally going after, after the artist. Cause sometimes you don't have anything to go after them. Because what, what can you say about Bruno Mars, Nothing, right? just the cocaine thing. That's it, right? He got arrested for cocaine, and the whole song is like an 80s vibe, whatever, funk music. So we're like, oh, that'd be funny. Let's just at least incorporate the fact that that's why they're all dancing around the streets with a group of dudes, and well, we'll give them some cocaine. Um, you know, that'd be funny. Uh, at least we can hit him with one thing there, and then... Um, then like what's going on in the video they're they're walking around look trying to pick up women the women are not interested at all uh stuff like that the fact that you know they're they're why are they driving around the car and they're all dancing but mark ronson's never allowed to dance so we made this whole thing up like okay mark ronson's never allowed to dance because he just can't dance and he's trying to fit in but he can't fit in uh so throughout the whole video that was like a concept we made fun of that uh so there was the michael jackson and then michael jackson because there was just a news fake news thing that had gone out saying Michael Jackson and Bruno Mars like it's his son so we're like <laughs> we're like okay and it went viral one day on Facebook you know how these things are and it was probably trending on Twitter and so we're like that's funny like I could actually see some people believing that obviously people people <laughs> did believe it for a day so if yeah. okay so you're the you're the master embodiment of haters uh, are your you know, hater comment videos. What do you call those? Oh, butt, butt hurt comments. Butt hurt comments. <laughs> Is that just another? Give me, give me the pitch of what those are. Those, what the actual show is, or what the comments are. The show. The show is me reading the top five, basically angriest comments about me, directed directly at me. Usually, it's like really brutal. Okay. Yeah, so and, but it's funny because it just gets more and more illiterate and angrier, angrier they get. I mean, get. what made you think I I need to do this? Reading the comments made me was making me laugh really hard because it was like I can just picture these people sitting in their bedrooms pounding on their computers so angry over something that's meant to make people laugh, you know? And they take it so seriously. So I was like, let's I think it'd be funny to make a a, a series just reading them. And how have people responded to it? People people love that series. The problem is I feel like a lot of the comments now on my videos are all negative because they all want to be on the- They want to be featured. They want to oh. be featured. So, <laughs> so many comments are fake now. It's hard to tell who's really mad. There's people so going completely instead, over the top. it's just all angry, which is great for the comment section because then it's more people fighting. But, yeah, you know, I don't. I can't even read the comments anymore, dude. I can't because I, I can't has tell what's ever, real and what's not. Has there ever been a comment um, before it was hard to tell if they were sincere Yeah, that hit home for you? It's like, oh, this, this hit me where it hurts. Um, has that ever happened to you? The table's being turned. It's not so much comments directly attacking me that I care about because that's whatever. You know, people can say whatever they want about me and I understand that and it's fine. 
I think it's stuff where people are like, you're being a bully or something like that. Like you're going to hurt their feelings where I feel like, am I being too mean? And I didn't know people would actually think I was saying that, like saying this from the my bottom of my heart. Like I mean all this stuff. And some people think that, and that's when people actually think that, you know, let, and I'm sure they're very young and they're just like, that's what your initial reaction is. This is someone who really feels this way because they made a video. Yeah. Um, that makes me feel sometimes just like bad, like, cause I, that's not my intention to be misunderstood. Yeah. I don't want, but I, that's like, like I said, it's like, if I met these artists in person, like when I met Pipple or someone like that, like I would be the first thing I would say is like, you know, I'm a huge fan of you guys. Like, I didn't, it just wasn't meant to be taken seriously. I hope you would know that. And when people don't know that, it makes me feel like I, I hope that the artists don't feel that way. Mm -hmm. If Um, you had to, if you had to parody yourself, I'm going to. So I'm going to start, I'm doing original music this year. Um, We're going to start doing original music. Why the hell not? I've studied pop music. I know it, (laughs) you know? Um, I'm going to do a music video and then I'm going to parody my own music video. Figure why the hell okay, not. so the first one is it gonna be a comedy song or a no? Or they're a gonna be serious, song? like but serious fun, right? Like, like Kesha, that's pop, hip hop. Okay, it's serious, but it's fun. It's right? lighthearted, lighthearted. I don't. But want, it's not jokes. It's, it's not. It's no. It's not party, jokes. Party music. But the video could be funny. Got right. It. Got so it. it's something that could play on the radio. That's catchy. That's not like oh, this is comedy. But the video itself would be comedy because who would you? Who would you want to play you if you weren't going to p- parody yourself? If because I that was, would be a yeah. that would be a total turn the tables. If you know, well, that would probably happen, right? If I put out a music video on my channel of myself doing an original song, I'm sure people are going to make a parody of it, right? They're like, "We got it. Let's get him back." No, but it, you said you were going to produce the parody. I'm going to do it and play myself. <laughs> okay. Can I, <laughs> can, can I make a suggestion? That yeah. would be hilarious. Yes. Uh, Vanilla Ice. Oh my god, dude. <laughs> This Get is Vanilla the, Ice to this pair, play you. Second, uh, this is the, yesterday. Roman Atwood kept calling me Vanilla Ice all day. Well, there's the Miami thing. Yeah, I mean he's <laughs> he's got he's got a lot of years on you. He just got arrested too for yeah, stealing, for stealing a, from a, a home. Pool it pump. was it was a misunderstanding. I believe it. I think he was okay. framed. I think he's framed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. he's not. A um, he doesn't need that. But I mean. I'm not saying it should be him, but that would really do it. Is if 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 you allowed someone that would to be play you, because you know when you play yourself, there's only so much. Oh, he's making fun of himself. I, that is fun. Yeah. You didn't ask my opinion, right? And I've, <laughs> yeah, I've given you three, right? That's interesting. Well, you can parody multiple ones. Maybe one is yourself. Maybe one is call it Robert no, I Van Winkle. Funny, bro. <laughs> He'd probably do it. Yeah, he would. That'd be funny. Well, I'm not gonna say he would, but I would. I would hope that he would. God, there's cool. a lot of stuff to make fun of me for. I'm excited. So, so, <laughs> I, so I, I think that's brilliant. So, I, what, not my idea, but just your idea to do it. I can't wait to see so it. So, what yeah, would you like, do? I've like, done that before. You know, you're gonna obviously you're you're already thinking about this. But yeah. Like if you had if you have to think about the things that you would sort of zero in about yourself to parody. What, I think it's what, what, what people what people perceive me as. Right. Uh, a douchebag. <laughs> that's like one of the main comments I'll get. I mean, that's a lot of people get that. You know, they make fun of when I have my hair gone. It's like, it's higher than yours. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, oh, this stupid little faux hawk and his big glasses. And look at his stupid earrings. What a loser. Stuff like that, right? It's like, oh, what a poser. He's trying to be like Bieber. He wears his hats backwards like Bieber. Like, you know, stuff like that. Oh, he wears Supras. His apparel, <laughs> his apparel embodies Miami. What does that mean? Right, right. So, I mean, look at the, like, we could go and read we could find so many awesome things to make fun of me for, which is what people are making fun of me for. And then they can relate to that because they're the ones saying it. What's the, and we all have insecurities, but what, you know, would you be willing to tell us what's, what's an actual insecurity? An actual insecurity. Um, like, you know, Bart Baker going to sleep at night, the, the thought in his head that if this thing was ever a comment, um, it would hurt. Jeez, that's tough. There's nothing you don't like about yourself. Oh, I mean, that yeah, you don't sure. want people to know. 
but you, but you're going to be forced to say on a podcast. <laughs> yeah, well, it doesn't have to be a, it doesn't have to be a secret. It could be also something that when people say it, they're like, "Ah, oh, yeah, yeah." But I think it, it's not like I, I have all, a lot of insecurities. Obviously, just about every, all that stuff in general, because that's the comments that I read. But I, I can't really single anything in particular that if I saw, and a comment would be like would hit me hard. Not in a comment. I think just my okay. Not in a comment. Insecurities but... in general. Um. Just, just uh, people losing interest in who I am as a person, right? Like falling off the map, uh, getting older. Hmm. Mm-hmm. I am rep by a management company that has fourteen-year-olds, so it's crazy to me that. How old are you? I'm twenty-eight. Um. Nobody knows how old I am, really, except for freaking Wikipedia. Mm. Uh, I might delete that. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean that's that's like an that's insecurity real. just in the space. Yeah. yeah, right now it's so it's getting so young. Because how old do you feel like you need to be perceived as to be to remain successful? Um, what's that number? I feel like everyone I meet thinks I'm 21 to 25. Um, so I don't know why that's like the sweet spot, but. I think 25, if you can stay 25 for a long time. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Because then 30 scary, bro. I mean, that's coming up. And then I don't know. It's like people are people going to change their perception of me? Um, and then it's also strange because I'm meeting all these fans and they're so young. But they're like, oh, my God, we love you. You're so cute and stuff. And it's just like strange because they don't know how old I am. <laughs> They yeah. don't have any. They don't have I any. I could be your father. Yeah, they don't know. They just don't know. <laughs> no, Rhett wasn't making a joke. He was. He was uh, being yeah, sincere. I could be your father. Bart. He could. I might be. No, but you I mean, might be. I'm joking. I don't want to derail the sincerity here because I appreciate it. You know, I'm uh, about to be 37, and I know a guy who already is. Yeah. You know, uh, it, I mean, just to put the, just to put the shoe on the other foot. Yeah. I've got gray hair. Yeah. I don't want anybody to know that. <laughs> yeah. You know? Like, I have to shave because there's gray hair down here in the beard. Right. Like, you can probably see it now because it's been a long day. It's like, I, you know, what if somebody comments about that? Right. And it scares me. That comment you know, I there's do that, hate. Yeah. I mm-hmm. have that insecurity. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, I'll put that out there since I put you on the spot. Right. That, no, for hey, sure. That's a comment that it If meant. you think you're old, you've yeah. made us just feel that much worse. <laughs> it's, and it, it's just, it's so, it, it's so, it's just the space is so strangely young right now, right? Yeah. And it's not YouTube in general. I feel like the most successful people on YouTube are all older right now still. Like they're, they're not 14. Um, they're not even in their teens. A lot of them are 20s, 30s. But you have to, but you have to have this conversation with yourself. And so do we. Yeah. So do I. And the right? thing is, like, and it, it's like harder. Like, how long will I keep getting Instagram followers? Who's looking at my pictures when I am like, you know, in ten years, am I going to take post a selfie and have like thirteen year olds click like? <laughs> you know what I mean? But that's the audience that's so engaged on those platforms. They, they are. I mean, I think that you know, we relate to this already. Already being ten years ahead of you. Yeah, I, I think that you know one of the things that that we hope is that you know the reason the reason they're so young is because this is so new yeah but they're going to stick around right 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 no yeah for sure you know, they're, they're but good. but i think that <clears throat> you know you're you're, you're kind of giving an answer to the insecurity but i think that it's just it's kind of just an interesting just to say hey this is what it is and we can rationalize, and th- that's a true rationalization. It may, yeah, and maybe they won't. May, may, maybe they, maybe they won't stick around. And maybe this is we, we've all peaked. Maybe that's maybe <laughs> that's the reality. Maybe we've all peaked. Yeah, and then no. we just got to figure out how to <clears throat> channel it, and you know, and and make a living. Yeah, that but may, that, that could be a reality. It could, at the same time, it's like we're doing content that's actually content driven as opposed to content that's in, driven by the fact that we're cute right it's not like the girls are watching these videos like oh he's so cute what a fun little video they're mm-hmm. like this video is good and funny and uh-huh, we're, yeah. we're watching it and yeah. it's actually viral right but yeah. so then it goes to the other insecurity that you seem to say what if people actually think i'm a douchebag yeah 
Yeah. Well, you know, I mean, a is lot that of, another one? I that's mean, an that insecurity. Keeps you awake at night, so to speak. That's just an insecurity I have in general, always. Um, when I don't, when I, when I'm, when I first meet people, it's very hard for me to tell what they think because they all have a perception of me as this guy at the end of his their, his videos, right? Like, yo, guys, what's up? Thanks for watching my parody, blah blah blah. And that's just me on camera getting people to watch more parodies. That's how I am in front of the camera. I'm different when I'm off the camera and people don't know that until they meet me um so i always kind of have this thing in the back of my mind like do they what do they think right now do they think i'm this freaking like wannabe white rapper guy who's like in your face 24 7 and just like a d-bag who's just trying to make money on youtube like so that's it's hard first impression stuff like that it's hard for me to tell how people actually feel yeah i mean that's just how because it is in it's general it's in the so, space so you're describing Somewhere between a character Bart Baker and, yeah. or just a an amped up, this is not a normal interpersonal volume right. uh, that I adopt. <laughs> yeah. I think, and then that's like the first thing everyone says too, is like, whoa, you're super mellow compared to your videos. But like when you met me, or I know you met Rhett last time, yeah. was that, it, is, does, it, does it go through your mind like when you meet people like us, is that what's happening? Wow, they, you know, I wonder if they'll get to know the actual Bart. I think it goes the... through my mind whenever I meet somebody in the space. When we first meet, it's like it's very hard to tell what people's intentions are when you're meeting them, and we're all because it's like some people are so some people are so selfish, and they're all and they're bitter that you're successful. Yeah. Like you know, even if they're successful, and it's like you're like, "What's up, dude?" And you're like, "Nice to meet you." And you can't tell if they really think it's nice to meet you, or <laughs> if they're just saying that, you know? Because it's like, let's make friends with all the other people who are doing well, so we can all do well together. And it's all fake. It's hmm. hard to tell what's right. real. It's just what the, it's hard in the space. Let's not in be friends, but let's collab. Yeah, let's let's collab, and then let's never talk again. <laughs> you know, or you know, stuff like yeah. that. And then I don't know. There's it's just. Uh, how th it's it's unfortunate, but everyone kind of is like I feel like has a little chip on their shoulder. Like, is this person being truthful, or is this person trying to get my email address and be like, well, let's shoot a video? It's well, there is that dynamic that when someone is succeeding, uh, you're you're like, I want to be happy for them. I want to know how they're doing it. Sure, and I wish I, I that was me. Yeah, it, and and we all and if we've been in this for a long time, like you have, yeah. we have. It, there's been so many ebbs and flows that you see. Oh, well, this is working for them now. Uh, th and this is not working for us anymore. Though this is really working for us right now. And yeah, it's uh, it's like a some sort of weird high school debate team yeah. competition that never the, goes away. Well, the whole well, the whole thing, especially VidCon playlist, it, I feel like it's a it's like a popularity competition still, right? It's like, oh well, how many Instagram followers do you have? It's it's interesting. I mean, you're describing kind of the interpersonal interactions between creators and YouTubers, but I think that anyone can relate to. I think it's a good lesson for anyone to learn that yeah. we, yeah. you know, it's as humans for some reason we just want to make a snap judgment about somebody and just put them in a box, slap a label on them, you know, uh, and. You have to fight that. You know, I, I feel like this conversation is a reminder for me in getting to know you that, mm -hmm. you know, okay, my tendency, maybe it's a human tendency, maybe it's just a link problem, is to want to put somebody in a box and slap a label on the box and say, okay, I, I have a foreign opinion about this person because I watched the first half of eight videos. Yeah. You know? And then I skipped to the end vlog once and now I can make a vanilla ice joke. <laughs> you know, it's, yeah. I mean, who's who's the who's the bad guy here? The person that I put in the box or me? You know, and I think, I hope that it's a human tendency and it's not just my problem. No, it to is. Wanna, to want to label people. Right. And so I think this is a good reminder that, yeah. you know, okay, and I'll just give an example. Uh, I think, I didn't anticipate your answer your rationale behind embodying the the haters instead of just saying, oh, the, I'm just doing this for the views or I really believe this. Mm. You know, I just found myself thinking, well, there's a couple of options here and I'm just gonna 
I'm going to choose the most likely one, and then I'm going to come at it from that angle. Right. And it wasn't it wasn't your answer, so it kind of surprised me a little bit. I said, okay, maybe everything you assume is not correct about somebody. Yeah. About you in this case, or yeah, people in general. I think that's a that's a good lesson. It is. So thanks, Bart. No, no problem. I'm <laughs> glad I could help. <laughs> well, we'll be uh, following your dad on Instagram. Yeah, you need to. And my mom has one too. Oh really? Well, yeah. go ahead and throw Shout that out, out too. I think it's just Bart's mom, Bart Baker's mom. Oh really? She's <laughs> yeah. She's totally fan mom. She's doing really. like a six hundred likes a picture. She's Bart's doing a mom. Really? Yeah. Bart's Jam. mom. Jam. I think I'm trying to get her some brand deals, man. <laughs> <laughs> she's good at. She could give get like ten percent. We like a wine they're... deal or something. Next yeah. time they're here, we'll 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 see if we can give them an ear biscuit. But for now, it's time for you to sign the table. Oh, of, dope. Uh, dim lighting. Let's do it. Thanks, man. It was fun. Yeah. Yeah, that was fun. It got really uh, interesting, actually. Oh, it did? <laughs> yeah, I mean, I didn't... You can share something you learned, too, if this is like show and tell. I, what did I learn? <laughs> I just... What did you learn today, Bart? I learned that that talking about my feelings surrounding YouTube and my insecurities is good. It <laughs> makes you feel better in the long run. And there you have it, our Bart Bas Bart Bart Basker Bart Baker Biscuit. Is what I, I I thought I was going to get some great alliteration, and then you could I just, have said Bart Basket. I the Bart blew it. The Bart Baker Biscuit is the Bart Basket. Um, let Bart know and us know at the same time uh, what you think of our conversation with him on Twitter. Tweet at him Bart Baker and use hashtag Ear Biscuits. We truly appreciate when you guys tweet at our guests and include us. We read those, I know they do. Um, I feel like I've learned, I learned some stuff. I'm curious if you did, uh, I, I did, are, you, are my people? Can I be people yeah, right now? Yeah, people here in the room with me. Um, one of the fascinating things that I found, I, I always love to learn about the process that someone applies to something like this. And yeah. I think I, along with most everyone else, brings a certain set of assumptions to the process. And when I watch a Bart Baker music video, a lot of times I'm like, ooh, man, he's going there. He's saying that thing about this artist. Because he That's believes harsh. it. It's an artistic, it's a artistic representation of his personal opinion. Well, that would be the perception, right. Right. But what I learned uh, in talking with Bart is that he is essentially uh, taking what the internet is already saying about this person and their video, and he's distilling it, Ch and, channeling and, the collective criticism yeah, of the internet. That, and it's fascinating and it does two things. Number like one. a laser beam of criticism. But it the, 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 there's does two things. The number one thing is, is when you do that, you're tapping into what people want to be said about something and that helps to explain the crazy popularity. I mean, there's lots of things that explain the crazy popularity of these videos. You know, the fact that the production design is amazing, the fact that he looks as much as you can look like a person who is not you. Mm -hmm. uh, the fact that the musical production is exactly a recreation of it. But you add in the fact that he's saying the things that the internet's already saying, but he's saying them in a funny way that fits into the context of the song. Yeah, I mean. It's just a recipe for a lot of hits on the YouTube. Well, it, it makes me think of the, the principle of persuasion that you can either tell somebody to do something or you can help, you, you can get someone to do something by getting them to think they came up with it. And this reminds me of that in a little way that, you know, you think that I have tremendous insight, and I'm not saying he doesn't, but his insight is channeling their criticism and making it seem like uh, giving them something to resonate. It's like hearing it and giving it back to them. That's a, isn't yeah. that a principle of uh, persuasion? It is, and I don't wanna belittle the fact that Bart, no, is, no, no. Bart and, and the guys that he works with it's are- genius. They're, 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 they're writing, I mean, they're not just taking ideas from comments, but the fact that they are heavily informed by the general tide and the general public perception of a person, a lot of alliteration in that sentence, um, I think that's even more genius in one sense. Leave us a review on iTunes and a comment along with the conversation on SoundCloud. Those things uh, help us out as well. And you know, we'll continue to help you out if, as long as you consider this a help. I don't know if this is a help or just entertainment for you. I mean, you know, help maybe you get through your job. Somebody. But as long, hey, listen, as or long, your drive. As long as we can find the bread dough, uh, we will keep coming back and making biscuits. And that wasn't an analogy about getting paid. It was just literally 
He means literally we have to we gather have, We dough. have dough here, and you wouldn't believe it. It's, we're surrounded in it. Right. Surrounded by it. Yep. 